good morning today we will be learning about the reproduction in plants flower is the reproductive part of a plant and flower is the attractive part of a plant so today we shall learn about the structure of the flower type of the flower sexual part of the flowers flower parts to fruits agents that helps the pollination in flower agents that help the ovary of the flower to develop into fruit and we'll learn about the agents of pollination so let's learn about the flower first flower is the reproductive part and is the attractive part during spring season we see that many fragrance of the flowers and we can see the attraction of the flowers of the parts so let's learn about the structure of the flower what is the structure of the flower so mainly it consists of the four rolls these four rolls are sitting on the thalamus so when you come to the flower the stalk of the flower is the main part of the flower when we hold the flower we will hold with the stalk of the flower so it is called as the pedicel so the pedicel of the flower then comes the next part called as the thalamus this is called as the thalamus when you see inside there is a thalamus called as the swollen part so all the four rolls are arranged on the thalamus so it is the seat for arrangement of the four rolls of the plant so what are the four rolls the first roll is called as the calyx so usually calyx is like a cup like structure so mainly a, just a, as a tube like structure so holding the rest of the three rolls together so it is the roll which is holding the rest of the rolls mostly it is green in color and the top of it will be facing the petals so in datura flower when you see the datura flower it will be more forward so it will be just like a um, tube like structure and the top you can see just like a leaf like structure so slightly leaf like structure so the attractive part of the flower is called as the corolla so the corolla is nothing but called as the attraction of the flower and it gives fragrance of the flower and also it helps because of its bright color it helps in pollination so insects come and for nectar sake they come and suck the flower so the nectar will be present just below the near to the thalamus there will be nectar so you can see the attractive part of the flower is called as the corolla so the first one is called as the calyx so this swollen part is called as the thalamus and the stalk is called as the stalk of the flower or also called as the pedicel of the flower so the calyx part is the first roll and the second roll is called as the corolla it is the second roll and the third one is nothing but called as the filament and anther lobes so this part is called as the androecium this comes under the third roll so it is having a filament with two anther lobes so it is just like a tube like structure and this is the main essential role of a plant the calyx and corolla are the non essential role of a plant so they are not so important for the plant but right now flower has the four important parts so the main important parts or the essential role is called as the androecium this is the important role of the plant and also called as the male part of the plant so you can see here androecium to be there so with filament and anther lobes so this filament and anther lobe together called as androecium and the next important role of the plant is called as the ovary style stigma so this is the female part of the plant so it is present in the middle part of the plant so in the center middle part which is very important called as the ovary and this is called as the style and the upper sticky part is called as stigma so the ovary style stigma the three together is called as the gynaecium so it is called as gynaecium of the plant so this is the fourth role 
the first roll second roll third roll and fourth roll all these four rolls are sitting on the seed structure called as the thalamus thalamus is swollen part sticky part so this the calyx part is green in color and the corolla part is a, a different colors so in different plants we see different colors bright colors some are red color some are uh, pink color some are violet so uh, different colors they are so they help in pollination and they attract the plant so previous one when you come to the previous previous one mm, so calyx the other name for calyx is also called as sepals so calyx sepals the other name for corolla is called as petals so we say that the petals are very brightly colored and when we see the androecium they are having filament with anther lobe mostly this anther lobes are powdery like nature so you can see like when you see the dusting of the pollen grains it will be different colors when you see gynecium it is the female part of the plant so this uh, gynecium is also called as the female part of the plant so these two are called as the essential role of the plant other name is pistil and carpels so these two are non essential roles and androecium and gynecium are called as essential roles so we can say them as calyx corolla androecium gynecium or else we can say it as sepals petals stamens carpels so these are the we can say with the two different names now we'll come with the types of flower so usually flowers are of two types based upon the essential roles that is androecium and gynecium they are divided into two types one is called as incomplete flower also called as unisexual flower so where we see this unisexual flowers so mostly in some bitter gourd or in cucumber or papaya you can see the flowers male flowers and female flowers are different so in some flowers all these roles are present in single flower but in unisexual uni means single sexual means the sexual part of a flower flower is a reproductive part no so sexual part of the flower so what is the sexual part of the flower male and female part of the flower should be present the flower if in which any one of the role or the essential role is missing it is called as the unisexual flower what is a complete flower now i have show given a diagram that is datura flower we are seeing 1 2 3 4 all the four roles when all the four roles are present in a plant it is called as bisexual flower so now we'll see the flowers so incomplete flower incomplete flower unisexual flower cucumber bottle gourd papaya are the examples of some of the unisexual flower with either gynecium or androecium so some flowers may be having only androecium and some flowers are having only gynecium so they are called as unisexual flower when you come to the complete flower or bisexual flower you can see that in datura ipomia hibiscus so this is the type of bisexual now whatever diagram i have drawn it is called as the complete flower or bisexual bisexual means two both the sex are present in a single flower that is in a single plant so male character and female character are present in the single plant so it is called as the bisexual flower now come to the male part of the flower so now i told you about cucumber papaya you have seen no so this is the male part of the flower so they are having stamens so what are stamens only these are called as stamen part so androecium is also called as stamen they are having filament and anther lobe so anther lobe consist of pollen grain they are very dusty like just like they can be uh, gone away by the wind they can be transport to the other plant so this is the female part of the plant which is having ovary style stigma so i have drawn in the middle part now this this is called as ovary style stigma so these are called as the unisexual flowers or unisexual characters of a flower so male flower and female flower so you can see in bottle gourd cucumber uh, and papaya you can see this male parts of the flower now comes to the bisexual flower so 
the bisexual flower consists of all the four roles in the flower when all the four roles are present in a flower it is called as a complete flower means male and female characters are present in a plant in this flower so it is called as a complete flower next one it is an incomplete flower so some of them are missing so calyx is there corolla is there we can see only uh, androecium or gynecium so the uh, other parts are missing only apart from these two any one part is there so it is called as incomplete flower now comes to the sexual part of the flower what is the sexual part sexual means when there are two characters male characters and female characters in the plant it is called as the sexual part of the flower since i already told flower is the reproductive part of a plant so what is sexual characters in the plant so they are nothing but the ovary style stigma so carpels and stamens when these two are present the filament and anther lobe when these two are present in the sexual characters of a flower they are called as the sexual part of the plant so mostly flower begins with the stalk and with the sepals sepals are also called as calyx and corolla attractive part of a flower but these are not the sexual characters in the plant they are called as non essential flower or not the sexual characters of the plant only the sexual characters of the plant are carpels and stamens now we'll come with the flower part to fruit what happens how flower will form into fruit i told flower is the reproductive part of the plant after fertilization fertilization ovary will develops into fruit so this is the ovary this will develop into fruit and inside there are ovules will develop into seeds the ovules will develop into seeds how this will happen we'll learn so how the fertilization takes place so when we see about how the fertilization takes place means this anther anther consists of pollen grain this should fall on the stigma of the flower when there is fusion of male and female characters in the plant when the fusion takes place then it is called as fertilization so how do it facilitate so the pollen grain should fall on the stigma that is the main criteria for the pollination to happen the process of pollen grain reaching the stigma of the from the anther is called as pollination so what is pollination so what are the agents of pollination we should learn now so pollinated flowers develop into fruit so pollination is the main part of a plant where you can see fertilization to be happen so let's learn about pollination pollination is of two types one is self pollination and cross pollination self means when the pollen grain falls on the same flower suppose if this is a plant and this is the flower suppose if there is the pollination which takes place this so from the pollen grain from this plant falls on this same species of the plant so when this pollen grain falls on the stigma of the plant so when it falls on the stigma of the plant so it is called as self pollination so suppose take one plant this is the another plant so this is the flower of this plant so take this as the another plant so this flower is there when this pollen grain of this plant falls on the stigma of the other plant it is called as cross pollination so self pollination cross pollination but mostly nature prefer, um, prefers every time cross pollination why because it requires variation 
So mostly nature requires variation in them. That's why cross pollination is far better than self pollination. Self pollination means same flower, pollen grain falling on the stigma. It is called as self pollination. So the same species of a plant, but the pollen grain of other flower uh, falls on the stigma of the other plant. It is called as the cross pollination. Here we will see the process of pollination. What are the agents of pollination? Nature, uh, the pollen grain is usually light in color, light weight. It can be blown away by the wind or by water or by through air or through human beings and some insects. They carry out pollination. So now we will see what are the agents. So air, so since I told that pollen grain is very light in color, light weight in nature. Through air it can dispersed um, uh, through the air and this pollen grain is produced in many. So the many pollen grains are there. So a plant produce many pollen grain. So during the pro by the process of mitosis and meiosis this pollen grain develop. So through air it can goes through water. So you can see coconut um, uh, through water it can uh, happen this pollination through animals, through animals also carry about pollination, insects and human beings. Nowadays many hum, human, be, human interventions also, they can dust the pollen grain on the cloth and then can, then can stick up to the stigma of the plant. That way they can do pollination. So these are the, the some of the agents of pollination, air, water, animal, insects, humans. So they carry pollen grain from anther to stigma. So they carry the pollen grain from anther to stigma that is called as pollination. Insects like butterfly which sucks the nectar of a plant, they comes to the uh, take the nectar, they suck the nectar of the plant. During sucking the nectar of the plant what happens? The pollen grain falls on their legs. So since they are very sticky in nature, the pollen grain get um, stick to the legs and slowly they go for nectar from plant to plant. Since they go from one plant to another plant, the pollen grain get dropped on the stigma. Since stigma is very sticky, the pollen grain get dispersed by that agent called as pollination. So in one way or other, the pollen grain should reach the stigma of the plant that is called as pollination. Now we will come with the what happens when pollen grain after pollination, when pollen grain fall on the stigma of the plant then it is called the male part is um, fusing with the female part of the plant. So it is called as fertilization. What is fertilization? Fusion of male part with the female part. So what is the male part? Pollen grain. What is the female part? Ovary and ovules. So fusion of units of male and female part to form a structure called as the zygote is called as fertilization. So when the fertilization happen, so this is the stigma of the plant and this is the ovary of the plant. So when the pollen grain fall on a particular plant, slowly the pollen grain will germinate. So the pollen germinate to form a pollen tube. So if there are many pollen grain falling on the stigma of the pla of plant, stigma of the flower. So if the pollen grain fall on the stigma of the flower, if many pollen grain falls also, only one pollen grain will germinate. So this one pollen grain has two male nuclei. So they germinate and enters through the micropyle end. The end of it is called micropyle and this is called as the embryo sac. Embryo sac. So what do the embryo sac? They have antipodals to male nuclei and to chalyza and egg. So fusion of male nuclei with the egg is called as fertilization. So fusion of units of male and female parts to form a structure called as zygote is called as fertilization. So in plant usually two types of fertilization take place. One fertilization is one male nuclei mixed with the egg cell it is called as the first fertilization and the second nuclei mix with the secondary nucleus to form 3N to form the second fertilization forming an endosperm. So 
the ovary will form into fruit and the ovule will form into seed and the rest of the structures called the calyx and corolla will get up dried up. So, this is the process of fertilization to happen. So, the entire process of fertilization for formation of a zygote is known as sexual reproduction. Till now we have learned about whatever in the sexual part of a plant or the reproductive part of a plant is called as the sexual reproduction. Now we will be learning about the other type of reproduction. So, during the formation of fertilization the seeds are the sexual reproductive part of a plant. So, again if we sow the seeds we will get the plant and again plant will produce flower and flower after fusion or fertilization again it forms into seed. So, this is the entire process of fertilization. Now, we will go with the asexual form of fertilization. So, asexual reproduction, asexual means without the intervention of gametes, without the flower, without the seeds, there is one type of fertilization called as the asexual reproduction. So, this asexual reproduction is very simple, very easy, but you can propagate the plant, you can get many plants at a time also. So, the veget what is meant by vegetative propagation? It is nothing but propagation of a new plant from the vegetative part of the plant. What is the vegetative part of the plant? In a plant root is the vegetative one of the part, stem is the part and leaves are the vegetative part of the plant. So, either through the stem, root or through the leaf. So, with any of the part of the plant, through root also you can propagate the plant, through stem you can propagate the plant, through leaf you can propagate the plant. But how we can do this propagation? So, take potato, it is you can produce new, um, new plants from this potato. So, what are the main basics about the potato? Potato has a depression called as ice. So, the depressions of the ice when you cut it and put it in the soil, you can get a new plant. So, that is the tubers of the plant, these are the depressions of the plant where you can propagate the new plant. How many depressions are there? If you cut to that area and put in the soil, you can get the new plant. But if there are no ice in it, if you cut it and put in the soil, you won't get the new plant. So, these are the propagation of the plant. So, you can see that through the, these are also called as the some of the uh, modified stem, stem modifications we can say. Now, we will see the leaf modification in a plant. So, bryophyllum, bryophyllum the other name is Ranapala plant. You can see the leaves having some edges. So, during the edges of this plant, you can see small bud forming. So, this small bud will give rise to a new plant. So, this is the simplest form, you can get many plants from this leaf. So, all the buds will give